Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker, sitting outside Callahan's Cove on Kerr Lake right here in Oklahoma. Do you have leaky turbo pipes? If you have a turbo, you might want to check. Watch this. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, that's great. All right, so you found a good problem. Andy's back with us. This is Andy. He's a mechanical genius. Down in there is our turbocharger. There's a better shot of it. What happens is gases come off the exhaust. They spin this fin. It has a shaft that goes through and spins a fin on the front side. It sucks air in, blows it through this pipe, up through an air to liquid cooler. That makes the gases more dense. Out the other side of that cooler and into the engine. What it's looking to do is put more air in and cooler air so it's denser air more oxygen molecules more bang in the top of the cylinder but Andy being the diesel whiz kid he is says hey, if this thing leaks any and those soap bubbles mean leaks then you don't get the pressure that you want and all he's done is he's got some hardware fittings and he plumbed in an air line to the front of the turbo that normally sucks in the air and he's blowing air into it and checking for these leaks with soapy bubbles simple thing good fix. And yeah, that's just uh, sewage parts with a uh, air chuck fit into the back of it. So we tighten up these clamps, get this thing not leaking air, more high pressure air goes into the engine, engine feels better about it. Check your turbo, maybe it's leaking too. Oh, that's extremely loose. Is it? Yeah, I figured. Well, maybe we just forgot to tighten it all together. Jeez. Yeah, amateurs. Yeah, so here's what that contraption looks like. We just tapped a hole in here for the brass fitting, but most of it comes out of the sewer and drain department. We even had that joint loose, so it's all tightened up now and pressure tested, and it's all good. So we should get more turbo boost, and to check that in the future, this plug right here is where we're going to put a gauge. That gauge will tell us how much PSI is in the system. So if it drops, you know you've got a leak somewhere. And if you're 19, your dad gave you a lot of money for a turbo truck, you can brag to your friends, my turbo boost is... Yeah, it's that thing. Oh yeah, and this doesn't have to be that well built in our case because our turbo only does 15 PSI. It's in that neighborhood, so that's what it was tested to. Check out your turbo. If it goes to 45 or something, you might need to build this a little stouter, and you got to put that much air pressure in to test for your leaks. And you might get lucky all the exhaust valves on your engine might be closed, but if they're not, just get a wrench down there on the crankshaft and roll your engine over a little bit. Sometimes there's not a nut to do that with on the crankshaft. However, there's an alternator to use. That bolt right there on the front of the alternator will often do the job. We found out we can hear it at 1,050 RPM now. So that is better. Many thanks to Andy for taking care of the engine. It's always nice to have it running better. We're gonna set a baseline now. This is gonna be like a starting point for us and we're gonna do that with a bollard pull test. We basically tie this ship to the tree, put it in gear, put it up to like 1500 RPM, something not too crazy, and see how much power she pulls with. That'll be of interest because it's a baseline for us. Any changes we make to the propeller or the shroud or the engine, we can always go back and do that test again and see if she pulls with more power. Now it's a static test, but that's still something that's very useful because and by static I mean you know we're not moving along we're not looking for speed here we're looking for how much oomph she has for yanking and it's a great thing for this boat because we're gonna pull equipment scientific equipment behind us we're gonna pull ourselves off the, the shores when we ground ourselves we're gonna pull other boats off so how much we can actually pull from a standstill is an important number for us and it's a great way to measure the power of an engine like a tugboat does but it's also something that you'll see as fun in small Smaller boats because we have some piranha propellers and they're fantastic. All right, I've already had people tell me, "Oh yeah, I love my piranha propeller." Especially uh, Chris Pelling, they they hit rocks all the time up there in Minnesota in those shallow lakes and snap that blade off. They just take the hub off, throw a new blade on, off they go. So look forward to that and uh, be sure to send us photos of your projects that you're working on in your shop. What did you make today? And I don't mean today as in today. You know, when I started this boat, I made one promise to myself. Every day I would do something to further this project down the, down the road, you know? And I'm here now and uh, Darwin and I are getting ready to go for a nice swim in the lake here. So we've made it and we're gonna continue to keep making it. And that's the secret I wanna tell you is just go out in your shop, do something small. Even if it's just going out in your shop and cleaning off your table, that's progress. You know, some days that's all I got. I got my cha clothes changed, I went out to the shop and I stood there and I thought about something. I don't know what to do. So you go back in. Tomorrow you do the same thing. Ah, I got an idea. That's the way it works, gentlemen. Get out there in your shop and make something. If you make something, you're making progress. If you don't, 
No, 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 no. Come on. 